Hey everyone, John here with How to Film Weddings, and today's episode is a fun one. It is one I recorded about a month ago whenever I was in Las Vegas for WPPI with Charlie Hilbrandt. He's based out of Chicago, Illinois. It was a great conversation just about WPPI, what is it, the filmmaking competition, just talking about submitting your films to be judged, the industry as a whole. It was a really good conversation, and it was actually kind of nice to be in person. Um, we actually set up inside of a casino. We went inside of this restaurant. Restaurant um, with the casino right behind us. It was a pretty cool time. Um, nobody kicked us out, so I guess it was okay. So I'm really excited for you guys to see this conversation, to hear this conversation with Charlie Hilbrandt. But before that, I wanted to remind every one of our listeners that it's a couple weeks out from Venture Workshop. Please jump on VentureWorkshop.co. Check it out. It's going to be the largest wedding filmmaking conference in the world. Some of the best speakers, um, May 6th through 9th, Denver, Colorado. Be sure to check that out. We're going to be recording a live podcast. So I really want you guys, if you can make it out to that, check it out. Use promo code A. HTFW50 for $50 off your ticket. I know they're closing the ticket sale soon, so be sure to do that. And let's go ahead and jump right into this week's episode with Charlie Hillbrand. Oh no, dude. Uh, I wasn't recording. <laughs> I, I got it. You can't get me. <laughs> that scared me for a second. Hello and welcome everyone to the How to Film Weddings podcast. I don't know what episode it is. We're in Vegas at WPPI. Just had dinner with these two guys. Why don't you, real quick for the listeners, uh, tell tell us who you are. Let's start with Charlie. Where you're from? Where you where you shoot? How long you been shooting? All that stuff. Give me some. Give me some of that. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you. Yeah, hey guys. Hi, Charlie uh, Hilbrandt from Chicago. We film all over the place, but that's where we live, my wife and I and my two sons. Uh, I'm a sucker for great storytelling and an awesome aerial shot. So if you see my work, you'll see some of that. My favorite movie is Rear Window. It's old Hitchcock. If you've never heard of it, huh. go watch it. And so you can see some of that influence in my work and that voyeuristic through the the longer lens type stuff. That's what yes. I like to... Yeah, I'm a voyeur. <laughs> you heard, heard it here first. All right, so you're in Chicago. I'm in Chicago, yeah. You grew up there? Is that what? Born and raised. Born and I raised in Chicago. To, uh, school in Dallas, yep. for college, and came on back, and I've been in Chicago ever since. Met my wife on the. Met my wife in Chicago, and that's what's been keeping me there. Okay. And uh, yeah, I met her on a. I met her on the public transit. Oh in man, Chicago. that sounds like its and own I knew story. The second yeah, you didn't know how that sounded. It so it it ties in here because. I moved into my wife's apartment like really soon after meeting her. Yeah. Who lived across the hallway from us when I moved in? No. I'm serious. That's no. how I met Larry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I met Larry because Larry and his wife, Mary, lived across the hallway from my, would at some point be my wife. That's incredible. Yeah. And so that's, that's with the bromance, I yeah. mean, kind of got going. Yeah. I mean, you, I, I make the argument often that it, it started... Long before humankind was even like a thing. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. it just was written in the stars. <laughs> yes, we're gonna make better. out now. Yeah. Why don't we take a quick pause <laughs> to, for our show sponsor, sponsors? These guys make it out or something. So <laughs> it's hey, it's Vegas, man. Anyway, um, and so we've been in Chicago ever since, and okay. that's where we live. But uh, you know, we're we're kind of all over the place. Almost, all right, location wise. And tell me before we go over. Sorry. Uh, price range that you're charging for films, kind of average. That how many bookings you're trying to do in a year? Twenty. Twenty weddings. You get a four nice to six, number. four to six minute wedding film. Yep. For seventy two fifty, and you get a nine to fourteen for seventy eight fifty, and then the add ons yep. come after that, and that's kind of what we do. Mainly Chicago. No, we, you know we're about forty five to sixty percent Chicago. Okay. And then we're Friends of friends that we did in 2013, 2014. Yeah. Now they're younger siblings and stuff. Yep. That network is getting married in um, Malibu, Nantucket, Boston. A um, bunch so of ugly just, places. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm now dealing with that kind of that thought process that Rob Adams had when he was talking with you about yep. destination weddings. Yep. Two kids at home. Totally you know, get that. Uh, just traveling with gear. It's got to be worth it. It's got to be worth it. It sounds sexy, but at some point... All that gear has to get on an airplane. 
even if you have a media pass, you're still, it's just lugging it everywhere. Yeah. So when I was 24, great to, you know, hey, we're going to go to St. Croix. How fun. At 34, your body reacts a little bit differently. Yeah. So. So that's you in a little bit of a nutshell. Who's this guy sitting to your right? Switch uh, let's let's hey. hear from him. Who, who's watching? What? By the way, we're we going Facebook two, Live. We have two people. Right we have now. two people. I see Jonathan over there, and is that Diego? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Wait, there we go. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. who are you? Hey. And tell us a little bit about your business. Where I know that you just moved. Yeah. I think. So okay. tell me well, about that. As Charlie was saying, I started across the way from him. Um, Back in 2011, 2012, I think, somewhere around there. It was a while ago. Ten. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, maybe. Okay, anyway. You guys are seriously like a married couple. Yeah. I wish you guys, when I did mean, they can really see it, but you guys are kind of <laughs> like a married couple. And it's funny because that's exactly how I pictured you. I've never met them in real life until it's today. True. It's all true. But like, <laughs> I'm wondering. I just want, it's fine if you, you know. Anyway, back to you guys. Sorry. There's so, a chapel here. You know, we, we could do this. <laughs> Our wives don't don't care. Right? Um, no, but I, I across the way from him, and then um, and then I moved to Indiana, and I've been hanging out in Indiana and West Lafayette. But last year I moved from Indiana to um, L.A. And yeah, buddy. So, um, I'm working on rebranding out there. Yep. And um, I still get inquiries for, you know, Indiana, and it's like, well... Okay, I will fly back. And yeah. in fact, when I moved out there, I still needed to shoot three weddings, so I I just ate those three costs. Trips. Yep. Yeah, um, came back and and uh, but yeah, now I'm out in L.A. and um, got a, I got one right. I got a wedding right away when I was out there. That one was crazy. That one of my craziest couples ever. I don't know what it is in the water. I love L.A. weddings. They I'm well. Let me tell you, they <laughs> met each other just three months prior to their wedding date. Oh my goodness. So they met, yeah. got engaged, and married yeah. in less than three months. So it was it was nuts. It was nuts, you guys. But that's what I'm doing now. Um, I, shot, I shoot with Charlie all the time. Yep. Charlie brings me in on kind of bigger Chicago weddings. Um, I bring him out on uh, some of the L.A. stuff. We have, we have a wedding in L.A., in Malibu, on May 25th. So... <clears throat> We have to talk about that. <laughs> we got to talk about some we stuff. Talk about that. Can we do that yeah. right now? Sure. I haven't updated Larry. On so I got- did they cancel? <laughs> <laughs> they did not cancel. So I was talking to the mother of the bride. This is, I have a little bit more contact with the mother of the bride, a very special family, but just naturally more contact with the mother of the bride. Mother of the bride tells me. Wait, have I met her? This is. Uh, the previous couple we shot? No, we didn't shoot together. This is the, yeah. So, Mother of the Brides, this is Saddle Rock Ranch in mm-hmm. Malibu, where fires just devastated yeah. the whole property last yeah. year. This is the quality of 2019 couple I have. I want to talk about just the character of this of this couple. The whole property was demolished. Visually. Seriously? Like, the venue is gone? I mean, it's or just burnt, burnt, burnt to a crisp. Wow. So, <laughs> blackened charred just visually not where you'd want to have a lush ornate Malibu you know get yeah, together what they were originally planning which they were planning on yeah. and which they paid for yeah. so the the bride says to her mom mom we're the people that work there and put these events on the the creative partners who we've hired for the day they all need to get paid and they have families they're going to work mm-hmm. that day we're doing this wedding no matter what and That's we want awesome. to support that area and that community and I, I couldn't be more grateful to be able to go to work for a couple like that. Yeah. And a, and a family who raised somebody to make that decision. Yeah. They didn't say, you know, hey, we want to move locations. <clears throat> this is awkward. <laughs> no, we want to move locations. We, we contracted for this beautiful landscape that we're not going to be able to get anymore. It, how inspiring to us as creators to have somebody that that's their DNA. Yeah. You know, that makes me want to spend an extra yeah. Time on the day with them. Sure. You know, so. That's really that's cool. That's the update of the Malibu thing. There you go. That's Live the in Las Vegas, so, Nevada. I, if you're just joining us. <laughs> um, I'm supposed to go do a shoot. So I got to head out. Already. You're, you're going now? Yeah. All right, cool. Like He's um, got to go yeah. do bigger and better things than this, but thanks for being on. We're going to move out of your it's way. It's not bigger and better. 
It is not. But thank you to Larry for being on. People watching online are going to see my got, butt. Uh, Jonathan. Yeah, John and uh, Diego are on. That's great. They're hanging out. <clears throat> you know, John, we're not. Oh, I'm we're upside not. down. Uh-oh. Hey, John's see worried. Uh, All right. So I want to talk. Um, I'm going to off because I think we're doing good levels here. So okay. John. Well, I want to talk a little bit about where we are and why we're here, yeah. and I don't know much about, and I thought it would be cool to come in. So I came in, like, last Friday. Um, it's now Monday, and I bought tickets to come out to WPPI. I'm going to dump the uh, the Facebook group. See so your Facebook you, group. Hey, uh, make sure to watch the podcast that John's going to yeah. put up, and thanks for watching. Um, so, yeah, and this will air after now, <laughs> after WPPI. <laughs> so, like... Um, just like for somebody that's never been here, yeah. um, what is it? And like, you know, we hear a lot about like, is the video part of it worth coming to? Yeah. I'm skeptical. I mean, I know you've, you, you know, maybe tell people what you've been doing today and um, like with the judging and everything. And then. Of course. Yeah, a little context. Yeah, give us some context. Yeah. Um, and again, if you need to run or whatever, you just let me know. No, no, um, not one bit. I mean, I honestly, you know, just, just for starters, I mean, now that. I think what you and Nick are doing is so instrumental in bringing another voice, actual voice, yeah. to the stuff that us creators, you know, what keeps us up at night. Yep. So, you know, these names, you're talking about these, these names of people that have helped shape our industry and you're bringing, you're bringing that to help us all, make us all better, which is what WPPI is actually all about. So it's yeah. WPPI is the Wedding and Portrait Photography International conference so yep. this is where Every year in vegas we're sorry yeah we're in las yeah. vegas we're in the you know the the entertainment hub so all of the creative all the the, the main uh product vendors are here mm -hmm. um the you know us as creatives are here to see what they've got to offer but we're also here to judge in live real time submissions for the best wedding films and the best commercial films that have been submitted yeah. For, for for the past uh, yeah. for this for this competition, and there used to be a rule that you had to submit a film that was done in the, within the past two years. Mm -hmm. Going forward, if I understand correctly, there will not be a a rule on on when that uh, item was captured. So gotcha. you could submit something you were super proud of doing for you know four years ago. That's so cool. this competition, yeah, we uh, there are six judges six judges on the panel. We sit in the room and we watch. The piece this year it's all films under five minutes okay and we assign it a score based on set criteria and uh, the winner at the end of that receives uh, the appropriate award That's so cool. today we watched I forget how many commercial films I forget how many wedding films but tomorrow uh, is when there will be probably more filmmakers in the room watching us in live time explain what our thought process yeah, was on cool. judging I'm excited to sit in on that it, it really is more than anything, so I think it, it, you know it can be a, a mis uh, a misunderstanding that a judge is somebody who's speaking from a place of authority, and you know we're yeah. gonna you know uh, really cr harshly criticize these filmmakers. But it's actually the opposite. It's like I'm learning so much more by being a judge because yeah. I'm, I'm picking up on things that my, my fellow judges are saying, things that are going to help me as a creator yeah. uh, go take back not only to my studio but to those other people around me and yeah. so you know there are things that we're looking for in this competition that might be beneficial to, to talk about on your podcast yeah you know that's awesome so. and so um for somebody that's never been you know to wppi or even you know submitted their films to you know um, a competition different things like that i mean why would somebody want to come do this why would somebody want to i mean is there any other like i don't have a film submitted you know what kinds of things are you seeing amongst the, just the community as it's building is this your first year here like are you seeing it change or grow because i know that people have talked about that too so wppi in general is historically was more photography yeah. focused still photography focused but thanks to the efforts of certain people jordan being one of yeah. them uh, we're really making a larger footprint year by year from a filmmaking standpoint. So yeah. more and more filmmaking vendors are showing up, more and more um, films are being submitted to the, to the filmmaking side of things, yep. of that competition I was just talking about. Yeah. So we, you have a couple things going on. 
the the question of why would I submit a film and why would I come to WPPI are two different things. You don't have one. You don't have to do one or the other. There mm -hmm. were some films today that presumably were submitted by people who aren't here, mm -hmm. and you know that's just fine. Right. There are people who are here who didn't submit films, so that's just fine too. What I love about WPPI is that I'm here and I'm talking with you, and his, thus far we've only talked via Facebook yeah. and in our groups and stuff. Yep. And you can really only get to know somebody so well but then when you get together in person there's there's nothing that 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 meets that level of connection and sure and i think that it's so important to remember that whether you're on a forum and you're getting advice or you're giving advice we are all tied to this connection of being creators of 100%. the visual medium so so that's why i love wppi because i can come you know if you watched the live video I took earlier just goofing with john I can come up to you and give you a big old hug. Sure. And I, I know that if you're, we're probably, we have some similarities. We're both, I think you're, you're a dad. Yep, okay. yep. Dad of two girls. I'm a dad of two boys. Yep. You know, we have these things in common that we're, you at some point, you know, here's one odd example. I'm just off the cuff here. Yeah. You probably at some point wish you could be with your girls or with your wife, but you had to finish a wedding film. You mm -hmm. had to get it out. That's something we all share is that, yeah. wow, man, we got that soccer game to go to, but gosh darn, I've got to finish this thing out and it's going to take me until two in the morning. Yeah. So just that, from a very basic standpoint, if it, that line of work can feel kind of lonely, but we're all in it together. So that cohesiveness, that <coughs> that camaraderie that we all yeah. feel, yeah, that's it, one reason I love it. It's been pretty yeah. cool. I mean, I got off a plane like two hours ago or something like that as I'm checking in. I hear, you know, I, I see this big, tall dude, you know, I'm like, hey, it's Charlie. Like, and I, I had never met you in real life, yeah. but like just, and then I just got through meeting, you know, Jordan and Taylor and everybody over from, you know, the Ladybird Studios and all that good stuff. And, you know, just like I knew who Josh Thompson was and I knew, and it's like this, this community is awesome. And like, even just in the last five years with Facebook groups and different things, like being able to like, I mean, you can, uh, you know, we we're talking about it on the way, just walking over here, just about like, it's so two dimensional on Facebook or on these forums where it's like, you try to give advice, but you don't like get context of who that person is or, and so like just being in the same room with these people and like being able to like high five, like it is, it's pretty magical, you know? It really is. So you have that awesome camaraderie <clears throat> aspect of it. And then we have the filmmaking, uh, judging side. Yep. And for some reason, when I hear the word judging, I just like, it's like a trigger word because mm -hmm. I just kind of like shell up and I, I'm like, oh no, don't, nobody watch my work. Don't not, judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> don't watch my, don't watch my work. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it's not good enough. I have this like imposter syndrome thing. That's, yeah. I need to like have an in-person. We all up. have that. We can unpack that for a sec, but. Look up Brene Brown, read some of her work and you'll find out really quickly if you have imposter syndrome. It's basically the idea that like. I'm not worthy of being here among these great yeah. creatives. So I, I kind of suffer from that. But anyway, the point is, w what we do is we sit on this panel and we watch the wedding films that were submitted throughout the year. The reason why this is important is that we are the, we, the viewer, you'll be a viewer tomorrow mm -hmm. during the judging. And as the judges, we're all ambassadors in our industry saying what we want the benchmark films to be. What level of skill, expertise, talent, sheer imagination are required to be what we as a community mm -hmm. say is important for us all to try to hit? What's the one studio or actual, and in this case, it's the what's the one film that we should all strive to make stuff like? Sure. And so that's the Which idea. Which is pretty incredible. Like, I mean, to think about it. And to just have something that you can kind of gauge against because... Like 2007, when I got going, it was like, first of all, Facebook or, you know, the internet was in its infancy, you know? And so like being able to like have this platform to connect with each other and these podcasts like we're doing and just like overall, just the community aspect of it. Like, I think the more that we get connected, the more we all realize that like, we don't all have it figured out and that like, we all have the imposter syndrome and, you know, there's this thing about you know, your highlight reel versus someone's behind the scenes. And like, I think that it just, the willingness of people to be vulnerable and say like, yeah, this is what, this is my work. What I did with a live event, judge it, you know? <coughs> Vulnerability is something that 
it's really hard to feel through the interwebs and through those forums. Yeah. Then when you sit down with somebody, you can you just kind of realize, oh, they're a human. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they put their pants on one foot at a time. <clears throat> I had, I mean, I don't, I don't remember. I remember. Just if, if 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 we can all share with each other that we we are vulnerable. Sometimes mm-hmm. you know, I, I am somebody. That I have crazy anxiety. Yeah. You know, I I think mental health is a is a topic we need to all talk about yeah. more than yeah. we do. There shouldn't be a stigma about saying, "Hey, I had a really long winter. Yeah. I had a hard time this year." Yeah. Um, and luckily, I I don't see much language that's destructive. You know, or, or doesn't support that on our forums. I think we need to keep yeah. encouraging people to say if you know, if they need help. There's no such thing as stupid questions in our industry. There's no mm-hmm. such thing as a, a film that's not submittable to a to a yeah, a, 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 a competition, competition like, yeah. like like WPPI. So, in that vein, submitting is so important. Yeah, going forward. Here's why. If you know, if you're listening to this, submitting whether you think you're worthy of people's views, or whether you have crazy imposter syndrome or not. We, we should all submit our films because the more submissions WPPI receives, the more categories we'll be able to yeah. judge here at WPPI. So that what I mean by categories is this year, every submission has to be five minutes or under. Yep. Some of them were shorter than that. Some of them went right up to the mark. I don't want to give too much away, but if we have a hundred submissions next year, <clears throat> if we have 200 submissions, we'll be able to say, hey, let's make a category for just Instagram trailers, right? So 60 yeah. second video. Yeah. Or how about we want to do the best film under 10 minutes. So you can go right up to that 10 minute mark. Mm-hmm. How about best film only shot in one day, right? So we're adding these parameters to it. Yeah. But in order to do that, to have those robust category types, mm-hmm. we have to have more submissions and show WPPI that as filmmakers, as a community, we're all interested in being mm-hmm. here and ultimately furthering our craft. Yeah. I think when we do that, it, it just sparks this this fire because the manufacturers are seeing, oh, filmmakers are showing up here. Mm-hmm. Let's start bringing more of that those filmmaking tools to the uh, to the booths. Like so, it just will all mm-hmm. it'll all elevate and it'll all rise the tide, raise yeah. the tide, rise you, raise or rise, raise the tide. It'll raise the tide. R- yes. So that's <laughs> why it's important to submit, regardless of whether you think that it's worthy you know and the coolest thing about submitting is if you watch the judging happen live in person you'll grow as a filmmaker because you'll hear yeah what those judges are thinking when they're watching it and they might point out something you completely missed yeah and that's what i've seen like in our how to film weddings facebook group we just started like once a week i've just been saying on thursdays like hey post a link to one of your most recent films i'll watch the first one and critique it so i've been doing like just a weekly you know, and as I'm watching people's films, it's like, oh, I need to do something better in my film. And like, I think that having those open discussions where you're not so worried about like somebody, like if your if your entire worth isn't like wrapped up into like if somebody thinks that your film wasn't good, because it's like I might love a film that you hate, and that's what's beautiful about what we do. You know, one of the coolest things that you did was you you, you thanked Brandon for coming on your. You know, to, to submitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Brandon Rice submitted his, his wedding film, and you, you said, thanks for sitting, at the very end of it, you said, thanks yep. for sitting in the hot seat. Yeah. You have to push your ego aside that you have attached to this. <coughs> I know how much time it takes to edit a wedding film. Yeah. You know, the sacrifice you make to be stay up late at night making it yeah. happen. But putting it in front of other eyes is the only thing that's going to make you get better. Mm-hmm. And... If you if you if you don't if you hesitate to put it out in front of other people because you're afraid they're going to point out something, you're only holding yourself back. Yeah. Also, when when somebody watches, you're also by submitting to whether it's submitting to you or to a competition, mm-hmm. you're furthering other people's careers. Yeah, they get to watch. They get to say, "Oh my goodness, you know what? John was watching this, and and he pointed out when there was sometimes a little bit too much slow motion when there maybe should have just been normal yeah. speed 24p." Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Knowing that, I'm going to go into my next edit and yep. maybe reduce some of the slow motion yeah. because I, what I think looks good, maybe. Because the overall goal isn't to like all sit in a circle with each other and like give each other a pat on the back, necessarily. Like what we're trying, what we should be focused on doing is how we can produce something that is the best for our brides and grooms, and like 
I think we get so caught up in like each other's work sometimes that we forget that the bride and groom that are hiring us love our work and don't know who Charlie Hill Brandt Films is. They know who Redeemed Productions is. Redeemed Productions are it, one of those. But anyway, like I think that we focus so much on the what everybody else is thinking and comparing yeah. ourselves among ourselves that we're not listening and saying like, well, the couple's going to want this and like this. And so like there's this balance of like other people that are in the industry critiquing your work against like, what is the client saying? Do they love it? And like, so you're, you always are really needing to compare against yourself. That's a great point. Hopefully your barometer is calibrated, right? Your compass is yeah. true north because you're digesting great podcasts yeah. like this one or other. <coughs> Air is so dry here that I'm just. Yeah, dying. I know. It's welcome to the desert. Yeah. Uh, if you are digesting the proper education materials that are available to you on a regular basis, whether that's yeah a, an in-person live Ray Roman class, you know, or if it's a you know uh, the How to Film Weddings podcast, which is free, it's so valuable. Then your compass will point more toward True North, and then yeah. you'll you'll be able to have kind of a using yourself as that barometer for what your couples are going to want to see. I will point. Can I just point out something that happened today that was yeah. along those lines of what you're talking about? Yeah. <clears throat> There's this tendency as judges to be like, okay, so we represent the industry and what you know we're this, supposed to be this neutral baseline for yeah. these scores, right? And today, I'm trying to think of how I can say this without giving too much away. When this uh, when this airs, it'll be after WPPI. Oh, okay. So I think fine. <laughs> so I can talk about it. Yeah. Uh, I won't well, talk. still, though, technically, I'm not supposed to talk to you, so... Okay. Oh, gosh, I'm getting in so much trouble. All right. This, no, is, this is recorded a week after WPPI. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's April. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what happened today was there was a film that was visually stunning. Composition was on point. It was compelling. Mm -hmm. Audio was great. <clears throat> and then we started to see some more documentary-type moments. And we're like, huh, this is a departure from that really interesting artistic cinematic now yeah. we're sort of seeing like real life and we realize we're in a hospital room and we're visiting the bride's very ill grandfather mm -hmm. who couldn't be at the wedding so we we depart from this opulent ornate yeah. crazy energy and we go into this real human moment green cast on all the skin tones garbage lighting it's a hospital room for yeah. gosh sakes you know yeah. it's like it's like ray would say it's lit up like a, it's lit up like a costco shopping aisle yeah it was important not even important it was pivotal critical for that family to see those images mm -hmm. in that wedding film and and they they are going to be so happy with that so it's so important to yeah. check back in with what are we really doing here yeah What's the, what, you know, is it so easy to get wrapped up in the, well, my stuff doesn't look like Ray Romans and yeah, I get that. But also don't be afraid to say we did a really good job of serving our client. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I go back to that a lot is like my films end up being 10 to 12 minutes long usually because I've been doing this for 13 years and I am not really concerned about what you I want you to like my films but I don't I am more concerned about 10 years from now the bride and groom want liking their films so I mean I've been producing yeah. some of the times some shorter little you know highlights for my own usage just for my own reels but I've just kind of stopped I mean the last couple of years I've just kind of stopped I've just been whatever I feel like needs to go into the film for the couple that's what I put in the film and that's kind of become my style more so than like just it all being such eye candy and so perfect. And so it's like, nope, that moment was really sweet. I'm putting that in there. I don't I don't care if it doesn't match exactly right. I care about the, that bride in 10 years when her grandma's not there anymore. You know, and so that, that's my compass. There's on a guy in Chicago it. right now who's coming up and he's he's really talented um, and he's finding these little these little behind the scenes moments and he puts them in and I'm telling you what John it's I, we're, we're gonna see him here next year because yeah. he's just so talented and he's not he's not worried about the eye candy and in fact in forgetting about the eye candy he finds these moments that make you forget about eye candy even existing ever yeah. it's just yeah. so that that's what you're selling is that, mm -hmm. that reality right that like it's so true to you and your brand and I think that's really respectable so yeah and, and yeah. I mean Again, and I think the cool part about all this and about like, like if people's focus is 
I'm submitting this work to WPPI or to a forum or to my friend or whatever, like the, the point of it to me is like creating community with each other, but also just like making our films the best for our couples while pushing each other to not just settle. And so like I can, I know I can get into a, a place where it's like, well, I know the couple's going to love it. I'm good. They've already paid me. They're going to be happy. I'm booked up for the next. But it's like things like this and submitting your film and like knowing that like if you do have a buddy that you're like showing your films to and they're helping critique. I, I mean, I really recommend that. Like just having one person that it's like I send you my films, you send me yours, give each other like a really hard critique, like just watching it through, recording it or whatever. Who's your who's your Thelma to your Louise? Nick is becoming that. Nick? Nick yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. Nick or Phil Harbuck. Uh, we've been, yeah, but you know, Phil, like, Phil's like, Phil is one of those guys that I feel like I would just absolutely love on in person and I just have never met him. I'm dying to. He's a really cool dude and I've met him once in per Oh, I met him at InFocus like five years ago, four years ago, something like that. But we'll have to, we'll have to keep, you know, we'll have to keep doing things like this to get people to make WPPI more yeah. regular. And I, th- yeah. I really think that we're going to start seeing that this is becoming more and more where yeah. we all come to, to recalibrate and to, and to reset. Yeah, I think I know. could see that being that. Like, just once a year, getting to see everybody, you know, like, there's just not that that national thing that I've, that I've seen to, like, get to connect again with each other and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I mean, having a buddy, having somebody to, like, you know, honestly critique you that you're yeah. vulnerable with is going to push your brand so much further, you know, and so I've been really trying to push that. And that's what the How to Film Weddings thread is, is trying to help people find a buddy. Because like what I've been saying is, here's a thread, post your film. But if you're posting your film, you've got to pick up somebody else's film and buddy up with somebody and critique theirs. And people are loving it. That's so important. It's such a unique idea. It's going to help. So my whole goal, where I come from, is from a cra- cruddy job. I'm not sure if we're allowed to cuss on here. <laughs> we just bleep it. Y'all, y'all, <laughs> Southern folk talk real, real nice. Yeah, like, let's keep it clean. My wife will listen to this. So I, yeah. you know, being from Chicago, I talk like a plumber. <laughs> uh, so I don't even know where I was going with that. Um, you, so I came from a cruddy job. Yeah. It wasn't cruddy because it what those people do is cruddy. It's, it was cruddy because I wasn't fulfilled. Yeah. So my whole goal with what I do is, and where you know where we go and all this judging stuff, and is to help elevate, to help somebody who hears this, who's in a cruddy job, yeah, say, hey, I can go and throw my hat in the ring, mm-hmm. start doing wedding films full time, you know, part time, and then maybe go full time yeah. to get out of this whatever I'm doing that's not making me happy or or whatever, right? Because that inspires me. That 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 like underdog that come up that getting yourself out of whatever bad situation employment wise getting mm-hmm. inspired by the things we talk about here because then maybe in three years they're going to be the ones that are submitting that we're watching you know so that yeah. that, that excites me um, but this is the right forum for that to happen you know what you're doing with that buddy system that's that's what's going to elevate us get all get yourself and, a buddy get yourself a buddy that's it no um, yeah so we are I don't mean to turn the tables but what are you ex- you've had everyone on your podcast yeah not everyone. Not you. Not you yet. Now Have you talked to Alex Douglas yet? No, haven't. Okay, I hear he's a hot ticket. So yeah, we'll, we're doing our best. We've got a, a long list of people that are we're we're still working you, on. How did how did you fit me in the schedule? I mean, that's you, you have this list of VIPs, and then you throw me Come in on. there, man. You, you were you're about to ask me a question. Now you're just asking me to like give you you, you know, give you some compliments. No, no, no. I I I really actually don't like my own work. Well, I, I, don't, I really don't. I don't. Don't, don't say anything. I'm, but I really don't. So, because you know what that does? It makes me make the next one. I just want to kill it in the next one. That's yeah. it. I never get comfortable. Well, ever. I've watched your work. It's really good. I'll cut you off. It's stiller. You've talked to everybody here. Okay. I don't mean to turn the tables on you. You can turn them. What are you excited about, and what are you worried about for the next year in our industry? Um, for for the podcast itself or for like just for in the, industry? the trends in the industry you're saying it could be gear it could be people it could be anything so after talking to some of these you know industry leaders i am actually very relieved to be able to get their voices out there because when you think about like white and reverie or ray roman or rob adams or i mean all these matt johnson and all, like you know everybody that we're having on 
I asked kind of the same questions, just kind of pick their brain about, you know, advice for new people, things like that. And yeah, Matt, obviously, advice on how to grow a beard. How to grow a beard, yeah. yes. You know, but for real, like, just what's your recommendation? And they're all just so, it's the same of keeping it simple, not trying to do too much. It's not all about gimbal shots. Don't go into debt to work, you know, build your business. And nobody was saying any of that when I started. So, like, I just, I'm a big fan of, like, like, I'm passionate about helping people see how to make money in this business. Like, that's one thing that I really love is, like, that I am, that I make good money. Like, not because I'm some weird, like, slick whatever, but, like, that I, uh, I have this life that I've built for myself over time. It's not easy. I've worked really hard. And the people that I'm seeing that are winning are working so hard. And it's very motivating to be like, man, I need to work even harder. But not being busy. And so that's something I've been really, you know, I was worried two years ago. I had 12 employees. I had a bunch of weddings. I mean, it was, you know, a very large number coming in, but a very large number going out. And like, that was what I was worried about. It's just like my kids growing up without me being around. And so two years ago, I let everybody go besides one, my photographer and told everybody we're going to contract, we're moving, you know, and so. Um, everybody's a contract shooter now. I pared it way down. I have 19 weddings booked this year. I can pay myself what I paid myself the last three years with those 19 weddings. Um, so like after talking to all these people, like what I'm really hoping that I can help people with and what I'm most excited about is like making the business side of weddings sexy. <laughs> Number one about like running a solid business, not cutting any corners and really like focusing on what is it going like not just how can I make more money but how can I serve my couples better which in turn makes me more money and my north star is always I want them to be happy five years from now I want them to be happy five years from now because I've been doing it for 12 13 years like the people that come back to me even though I shot it on a Canon 60D they're like you 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 don't even know how much this means to me and like I just can't get to a point in these films which moves me to like what I'm scared a little bit about or nervous about is like so many people comparing themselves to other wedding filmmakers that we all became we all become the same and it's like we have to use this camera and this yeah. speed ramp and this yeah. whoosh and yeah, this it's like thing a singularity yeah you would and, just like all like and that shouldn't be what we're, same, what we're yeah, doing yeah. like I can look at your films and be like oh he does a really good job at composing or lighting or he's very solid or you know I watch Mackenzie Miller's films out of New York City and she's just like solid she doesn't use a gimbal she doesn't you know or you know I'm watching these people's films and it's like I can pull things yeah. away but like as you shoot more and more you know like luckily there's people in the space talking about not just copying what everybody else is doing yeah. but like building your own style around what you're you know what you love and being okay with you know like five years ago I wanted to be a megaphone and make everybody hear me and like in the, the brides around me I want everybody to like me I want everybody to book me and like the more that I've grown as an artist the more I'm very cool when someone's like I don't think we're gonna go with you and like how that's okay that's all go ahead I used to view that as like a loss Right, because yeah. like, you know, who likes taking a big L? Yeah, I don't love the L. I want to get that business. We're sales. I mean, I'm, yeah, we make films, but we're salespeople too. Yeah, so we gotta bring home the bacon. Sometimes the L serves you and them. Yeah. Sometimes them making that choice for you guys, that's great because you're saving yourself. Yeah, I go long. I'm a little bit long-winded. <clears throat> How are we doing? Okay. Sorry. Do, do, my wife, do, is, text, do, my wife do. is texting me scared oh. that I'm hiring like a hooker or something because I'm in Vegas. She's scared to death. No. She's like, are you okay? And I was like, I yeah. am trying to record a podcast with the one and only Every, Charlie Hillbrand. Everybody everybody <laughs> here know, like, can relate to needing to check in with your wife, your spouse. In fact, like I'm getting panicked because I don't know where my phone is right now. <laughs> <laughs> so <We're okay>. anyway, <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. Um Yes and yes and yes. All right. I've caught myself up with my wife. She knows I'm alive and not with a prostitute. So that's good. Or is he? I have this <laughs> yeah. time-stamped video, too. <laughs> yeah. Give me 
the freedom, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just yeah. <clears throat> What were we keep, talking keep about? Pro. Well, like videos. Oh yeah, videos. Video yeah, yeah. <laughs> wedding video. Um, okay, so a couple more things before I before I, a, I we finish up. I want to talk about. Oh, I was like so close to a good. Uh, you were. If you want to sit here and think for a sec, you can. No, I don't. We're I don't. talking I'm, about the uh, industry. I've also had times where I've been like in my car, listening to your podcast, where I've been like, oh, I should like ask him about that, and I, you know, forget. Now you're um, here. But now I am here. Um, and I think that I've, I've been so inspired by the things that I've heard come up on your podcast. And I think that this medium yeah. is so important. So we, I know that you know Jordan's got his, the Wedding Film Academy yeah. podcast, Film, Film Mavericks now. Yep. Everybody brings a different take, and, and, and that lends itself to a new conversation. Yeah. So if... I think I don't want to speak out of school here, but I think it's important if if anybody has that spark to maybe do one, they yeah. should do it because it's just a conversation. Yeah. And those little moments that you have that might inspire the other person, or you know, you, you maybe will take away. Are that's what's going to help further us all. What we do as filmmakers, you know, we're basically in this wedding film craziness. When you toss a pebble into a pond, everybody feels the ripples of what you do. Mm-hmm. Whether it's you make an asinine comment on a Facebook group, yeah, or you you make a you make a a comment Which that helps. nobody's ever done that. No, no, no. It doesn't ever happen. But everything that we do has ripple effects. Mm-hmm. So start that podcast. Make that nice comment to reach out to somebody yeah. that maybe isn't getting a whole lot of love. You know? Um, submit a film. Do those things that are going to help elevate everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly guilty of maybe not all the times myself, but I think that yeah, what I, you're doing is... Yeah, I just think it's like... So, I mean, it's scary. Like, Nick and I... You know, when we decided to start our YouTube channel almost a year ago and then like four months ago started this podcast, like it is four months. I mean, September, October, like four or five months. And so we're Man. 21 episodes in 25. I mean, we've recorded, yeah. recorded 25 or 26, but like the feedback that we've gotten from people because it was like, well, who are we to like, we don't know everything like, you know, but like. The messages that we're getting, I'm literally getting five to ten messages a day of people being like, just found your podcast, just wanted to say thank you, it's changed my life, I've made $1,500 more this month because of it, or um, things like that. And that, to me, like, this isn't like how I'm going to retire or anything like that, but it was like, you know what, I want the, I want to put my, my two cents out there and reach out to people and have interviews. And like you said, like with Jordan, like Jordan's a good friend. I've been on his podcast twice. He's been on our podcast and like, there's not like a competition on who's <laughs> like, like we all edit and we all have time to listen to podcasts yep. while we're editing footage. Yep. And so, um, you know, I hope that we can continue to bring people on and, and help the industry, you know, and like, we're very much into like my, what gets me excited is whenever somebody messages me and says, Hey, what you said gave me the confidence to bump my prices up by 500 bucks. And I can't believe I didn't do that sooner, but thanks for the push. Things, things like, you know, posting a, a an audio recording of you talking to a, a, a couple, you know, on your first destination. No, it wasn't your first destination, but on, you know, your first time recording a couple talking about their destination wedding, yeah. it was, you know, a sales call. Yeah. Imagine how helpful that's going to be to somebody that just is, is yeah. somebody who's rudderless in figuring out how to start yeah. that conversation, you know? Yeah. And I mean, after 12 years of screwing it up, <laughs> I've screwed up every which way I can. I've learned how to communicate better than I was 12 years. Not great. And I'm sure people critique that video or whatever. But the point is, like, I'm just trying to I'm realizing that, like, what I'm doing is working because year after year we're generating the income that we're generating. And it's like. Some people might be like, well, yeah, you're just a slick salesman or something, but it's like, I want to like, people think that like to make a lot of money, you either have to like be really good at sales or like your product just has to be like ridiculous. And I've said this a ton on the podcast, but like I give my films like a seven out of 10 compared to everybody else. Like I, they're good. They're great. They, you know, I use high quality footage. I'm, I know what I'm doing, but I'm not like reinventing the wedding industry with what I'm doing. I'm keeping them simple and solid and keeping couples very happy and just blowing them away with our customer service and our brand the whole time. And I do that again and again and again. And the prices keep going up and up. I think that's the best thing you could do. Yeah. I think it's the best thing you could do. I am so grateful 
to spend some time talking with you. Yes. And I, I, I'm hoping that we can do this again soon because... I feel like you're the podcast host and I like this. I like. I feel like it's turned around. He's about to land the plane. No, but seriously, like, I want to... Asking, who's asking how to land the plane? <laughs> Was that we, on, we, uh, we suck at landing the plane. I Whenever it's me, Nick, and a guest, but I'll see land that, the hang plane. On. Objectively, I for sure walk... <laughs> I walked all over you on this, so I'm going to shut up. Um, but thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm, I'm really grateful. I, I'm not going to land your plane for you. No, I appreciate the, the aviation and that type of help. But, yeah, I mean, I really do. I think it's cool to be here in Vegas. I mean, this was kind of impromptu. It's like 10, 9 o'clock at night, Vegas time, which is like 11 o'clock my time, which is five hours past when I go to bed. So thank you for, <laughs> being, thank you for being on. <laughs> um, to those people that are watching this on YouTube, sorry if the angle was bad. I stuck my camera on a what is that? A trash can, a coffee cup uh, holder. It's a coffee cup holder. Uh, I didn't bring a tripod because are... I didn't want to bring that to Vegas and carry it around because I was lazy. Um, oh, don't. That's the truth. I didn't want to get to carry it around the strip. That'd be weird. Um, but like to everybody watching, thank you for watching. If you're listening on iTunes or, or in your car or whatever you're doing, I mean, it'd be great if you took a screenshot. Posted about it on your Instagram story. Just let people know you're watching it. Screenshot, spread the love. screenshot this. Screenshot this. Yeah, can you see that? Wait, I have to look at the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, all right, cool. <laughs> but seriously, thank you, everybody, for listening. Leave us a review. Share. Join our Facebook group. Just search How to Film Weddings. And thank you, oh, no, Charlie. Dude. Uh-oh. Uh, I wasn't recording. <laughs> I, I got it. You can't get me. <laughs> that scared me for a second. Thank you to everybody for listening and watching. And until next time, Charlie, we'll see you. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Uh, uh, I... Literally, literally cracks the